Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Catherine. If this is the first time you come across this channel, please do stay and watch to the end. And before you leave, like, share and subscribe. And to my usual viewer, you are all welcome and welcome to the new viewers. I thank you so much for being with me. Well, today my topic is on fear. Do you know that fear is in the Bible? It is repeated 365 times in the Bible. Well, today I'm going to be sharing with you some um, people in the Bible, some great men in the Bible who had fear and overcome their fear through faith and in the word of God. So stay with me while I uh, take you through. Before I will read to you a few of the things that people are really, really scared of and how to counteract your fears. I mean, this video is not going to be a very short one, but I'll be reading some of these scriptures from the Bible. To confirm what I am saying. Okay. Stay blessed and stay till the end. So the first time we hear about fear. Which, when it was said in the Bible. Was in Genesis 12. Beg your pardon. It's Genesis 22. 12. Well, before I get to that, let me just read a few of the negative things, thoughts that comes to our mind are regarding fear. If you are battling with anxiety and negative thinking, these are the things that comes to mind. You know, I am no good. No one cares. You can't succeed. You can't do things right. Do not try because you will not get it right. But these are the words that the devil uses. So forget about what the devil is saying to you and turn your attention to God and counteract those words with faithful words. Now, I will read to you the words that you should use. To counteract those words that have been coming up in your thinking, you would then use positive statements like, I am a good person. God cares about me. I will succeed. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I will always try to succeed so these are words that are positive that you should always be using in your life so now let me go to um genesis 22 and um, verse 12 yeah let's read together and he said lay not thy hand upon the lad neither do Thou, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. So this was God talking to Abraham when he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. And in, in place of that son, when he said, Lay not thy hand upon thy son, he provided a lamb which was caught in a thicket in the fence. So Abraham used the lamb and sacrificed it instead of his son. So there, that was where um, Abraham obeyed the instructions through faith. So faith is what we should hold on to. Okay. Now let me get on to the let me get on to the next one about trusting God. Um, this um, was Moses 
um, during the time when God asked Moses to um, go and deliver the children of Israel from the Egyptian slavery. So this was a conversation. I'm not going to read all of it to you, but it, the conversation is in, in Exodus 4, chapter 4, verses 10 to 17. But I'm going to read from verse 10 just to... Uh, um, I'm not going to read all of it, but then when you have time, you read the whole thing to find out what the conversation was because it was like God there but they are talking in a conversation Moses was saying to God what he is scared of but he had the courage to do what God asked him to do through his with his brother Aaron so now let's go on to what Moses said and Moses said unto the Lord oh my Lord I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. This is why people think um, have the, the people stutter um, and we say stammer. And when um, you have those type of fear in you, you tend to uh, um, be sluggish in your speech because you, you fear that you will not transfer the message properly. But God is saying to Moses, I read 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who maketh thou? Who maketh thee dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? No, now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So we see here God is encouraging um, Moses to go and um, do what he asked him to do and he will be with him you know during the, the, that period of time so this is why we shouldn't fear and we should always trust God because when he said he will do something he will do it now um, if you have when you have time you you would go to Exodus chapter four and read up to verse seven from verses ten to verse seventeen. Now I I go on to David. David was a very courageous man. He confronts Goliath with faith. So I'm now reading from um, 1 Samuel, verse 34, um, it, it is where I picked up the um, information regarding um, David and his conversation with Saul when he was getting ready to go and fight Goliath. So this is the conversation. It's like... Um, it's like when you're going for a job interview, you have to, you know, sort of present yourself. It's like him giving his CV to Saul. Hear him. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. 
seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So this is the courage that we should have. When David went for this job interview to go and fight Goliath, he has to prove himself that he is capable of fighting that giant. So this is what we should try to do, to be forward and go forward to that mountain, climb that mountain that is in front of us and show that we are strong and we will conquer with the help of God. So this is the faith that we should carry on with. So I'm going through all the strong and courageous people in the Bible. Just few. I think I picked up six of them. So Esther is the, is the next uh, one, a, a woman of courage in the Bible. When um, um, the... Uh, um, 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 Esther took on the the king that was uh, um, going to slaughter all the Jews, and Esther was she she wasn't afraid. She actually sacrificed herself. She said, "If I die, I die," but she sacrificed herself for the Jewish people, and went uh, uh, um, to told his uncle um, to, to get, gather all the people so that they would do fasting before she confronted the king because you cannot confront the king unless the king uh, uh, sent for you. Hear what uh, um, Esther said. This is coming from Esther chapter 4 verse 16. He said to his um, she, sorry, she said to her uncle, Mordecai, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So we see that um, this woman was a woman of great courage. She is willing to die for her people. So we should all stand firm with that courageous spirit. Okay, now I'll go on to the next courageous person. Now I will speak on Job. So I'm now here um, on Job's, Job's story. Job was a, a man who feared God. And Job um, always prayed for his children so that God would protect them and for their own good. But um, as, the, as Satan wanted to challenge God, God said, go and find out to see whether this person will yield to, your, uh, uh, um, to you and your temptations. So uh, um, God, gave Satan, God allowed Satan to have free range on Job and, you know, Job's sons were killed and you know her daughters and everything that Job had and we are you know sort of taken away from him and even his friends were criticizing him but hear what Job said you know because he was he, because he was so faithful he he thought he was going to conquer every in temptation but hear what he said in chapter 4 verse 24 
uh, um, verse 24 to 26. For my, for my sign cometh before I eat, and my roaring are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. You see, because he he was he wasn't sitting on his laurels, he was praying, he was doing all the right thing, but he said yet trouble came. So this is what we should be looking at that. Um you know, despite we are doing all these things, we will suffer some of these situations which are very, very trying, but we have to persist and not once should we say why god did this to you because god is a faithful god he never does things that he knows will harm you now um i will go to the last um strong person which i want everyone should focus on and to try to read this book and it is the book of daniel bear with me while i get the information so this Daniel situation, you know, in, it's like what we are going through right now regarding the pandemic. And, you know, people are being pressured and um, being bullied in having the vaccine and all this sort of thing and being, you know, sort of um, isolation, shops are closed and, you know, quarantine, travel, taban and all this sort of thing. But let's look at what the politicians did to daniel the politically motivated administrators in the government and its cronies all those who support them um they pressured daniel to bow to their own god but daniel courageously did not give in to their pressures but he consistently prayed and trust in God, despite he faces um, conviction, um, in like being uh, if he refuses to obey to the law of the you know sort of land, um, he will be thrown into a den of lions. But um, Daniel trusted in his God. He continued to pray and refused to bow down to that pressure. Now, let's look at Daniel 6, verse 10. Okay, before I go to verse 10, let me just read verse 9. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards jerusalem he knelt down he knelt upon his knees three times a day three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his god as he did a full time so david has done this several times he always pray and but when he knew that Dario, king darius has signed this decree he knelt down three times a day in prayer to to god and god heard him so now god's people stand firm in your conviction to pray to god only for your safety and healing let god will be done in your life not mankind not man's law only god's law will suffice right. now before i close these um, words of encouragement i will give you this 
information. Never give in to any pressure. Let the spirit within you speak. And don't forget to pray because prayer works. Okay, my closing uh, uh, um, words. It's from Daniel's experience. Do not give in to pressure in your conviction. You felt, if you felt pressured, just put your knees in the ground and pray. Even if, like Daniel, that they were going to throw in the lion's den, if you are going to face any circumstances of being punished, be motivated by Daniel's story and face the fear head on with prayer. Pray like Daniel. These are unprecedented times and be grateful to God. He will bless and protect you. Be confident. Be firm in, in your decision. Because these days are extraordinary days and extraordinary times. You need extraordinary actions. So, God's people, I love you all. And today I'm recording this. It's the 12th of December. So, stay blessed, stay focused, never be pressured. Take your troubles and your problems to God. And He's the only one that can save you from any disaster, any ill health, any problems, any trouble. The Lord is there. Have faith. So, before you go, like, share, and subscribe. God bless and keep you. I know the video is very long, but I love you all the same. Bye-bye.